Breaking news today, Tom. I must have confessed I was so impressed. You got Konstantin Karanopoulos to join your advisory board. That has to be sending out extraordinary messages to the market. How did you make this happen? Um, hi, Tracy. Uh, good to be back with you here. Uh, we're very excited to have Konstantin uh, on our advisory uh, board. Um, the, uh, it wasn't easy because, as you know, Konstantin is one of the, uh, the top experts when it comes to uh, rare earths uh, worldwide. And, um, and uh, he is very selective in what he does. So I'm sure he, he likes happiest projects and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, Constantine uh, decided to uh, give us a hand. Well, I mean, and not only has Constantine uh, Karanopoulos, of course, led the leading rare earth and in fact put together other critical mineral deals like neolithium. I know he had a big part in that particular deal. Can you tell me a little bit more about uh, what may have enticed him to join your advisory board? Was it your Brazil project, your rare earth project, or your exciting uranium uh, project? I would say it's all of the above, but um, um, the Brazilian project, the PCH project, will be, I think, um, one of the um, uh, more interesting projects for Constantine because it's it's uh, rare earths in ionic clays and it's heavy rare earths and, and, and magnet rare earths. Uh, so Constantine had an opportunity to visit the project uh, and uh, looked at it and I think he liked the project and, and uh, he, he decided to, uh, uh, to join us. Well, for those of you out there that may just be going, okay, ionic clays, we're seeing all kinds of headlines out there with regards to rare earths. You also convinced Don Haynes to, to join your advisory board, and he is deemed one of the absolute best geologists in the world. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, Don's role and involvement in your projects? Don is a, it, it's what we call a very well-known expert what this type of, uh, of projects, uh, uh, lithium, uh, rare earths, uh, uh, industrial uh, minerals. And I know Don uh, for the last uh, 20, 25 years, I've been showing him projects. And, and the first project that I showed him that he got excited about was the PCH project. So Don has been a, our uh, consultant uh, from day one. He actually, uh, when we did the due diligence, Don visited the, uh, the, uh, the project and, and the property. And... Um, and he came back and he says, uh, yeah, it, it's very exciting, very interesting. You, you could have something here. And, uh, and since then, basically, Don is, is our consultant. So um, Don is being a, a consultant uh, or, and, um, and an advisor from uh, day one on the PCH project. Well, speaking of other consultants that I know have been involved with Appia over the years that were announced in this pileup of mecha mega talent joining the Appia Rare Earths and Uranium team in this morning's news release was, of course, Jack Lipton. Tell us a little bit more about Jack Lipton's role with Appia, please. Jack, again, is an advisor of, um, of Appia. He's sitting on the advisory board with uh, Constantine uh, Don Haynes. Uh, and um, as you know, Jack is a, a very well-respected, very well-known uh, rare earth expert and he has been for many years. He knows the industry, he knows the market, and, and, uh, and so we think we, Appia with the having three uh, top well-known ex experts, rare earth experts on our advisory board, it, 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 it's, uh, it's very exciting, and, and I think it speaks for, well for itself. Well, what I personally like, and those of you out there, you know, who are in the markets will appreciate this, is this came right on the heels of some extraordinary drilling results. You had some outstanding diamond drill results that you just put out, some very high grade zones identified. Can you, can you share a little bit more about these results with our audience who may be new to Appia? 
we uh, P, uh, we we acquired this PCH project at an option to uh, to uh, earn um, seventy percent on this project back in in, in uh, June July uh, last year, and since then we've drilled about three hundred drill holes. Um, so we have been getting a very exciting product, uh, uh, results on this on this drilling uh, constantly. I mean we had. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, rare earths, we had up to 93,000 uh, parts per, per million, which is 9.3% uh, total rare earth oxide. And, and this is basically in um, sort of the, 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 all the rare earths that we're talking about here are, um, are within the top, uh, uh, let's say 20 meters uh, from, from surface. It's in mainly in, in clay, or, or saprolite, but uh, the previous uh, the the seller, you know, the the, the previous owners had drilled uh, three or four uh, diamond drill holes, and um, the first diamond drill hole that they drilled um, uh, went down to 100 meters. They stopped at 100 meters, and they had some they had some really good results. But we had to Appia decided to reassay that that core. And, and just to uh, 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 make sure that you know we get the right numbers, uh, so we what we announced a couple of days ago is the reassaying of the first diamond drill uh, uh, hole that the sellers did. Uh, so we had uh, from zero to 100 meters at the end of the hole, uh, 3,577 parts per million. Uh, we within that we had from zero from from surface to 18 meters. Uh, 9,445 parts per, mil uh, per million total rare earth oxide. Seven meters within, within that was 18,275 parts per million. And um, one and a half meter was over 30,000 parts per million. And just for comparison, there is a deposit that went into production in the same area, same general area uh, that we are at the, uh, the Sierra Verde. And their average grade is uh, 1,200 uh, uh, parts per million in terms of their, their what their the deposit is the, the overall uh, average. So we're getting up to 93,000. It's a uh, it, it's very very exciting, and and um, we're actually working on a on a 4301 resource, uh, the first uh, resource calculation that we hope to have it out in the next uh, uh, few weeks or a month or one or two months. So. That would, I think, that would give uh, a, 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 the industry some good idea of what the what the initial results uh, and, and numbers are for this PCH project. And of course, I love the artwork behind you. I, I have to draw some parallels here to David versus Goliath. How the heck did Appia secure such an extraordinary project in Brazil? Can you comment on that? We have been looking for a rare earth projects for a while, and where I've been looking down in Brazil, we looked at some projects in the last few years, and um, uh, we just happened to get a call. We, we were one of the uh, the rare earth uh, companies that uh, I guess were approached for this project, and because I was looking for this type of project, I was ready, and and I jumped on it. You know, I think there were some other companies that were interested, and, and but. Uh, you know, we bit them to it, and and, um, uh, and we're quite excited. Well, speaking of being exciting, it seems like your formula at Appia is a win-win. You've got two of the most significant critical minerals that people are talking about right now, and nothing's hotter than the uranium market. And for those of you that are out there, it's Appia Rare Earths and uranium. So you recently put out some... Uh, uh, plans for drilling over at your uranium bearing project in Saskatchewan. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing with that? Because you have held a positions in several uranium projects over the years. Yes, uh, uh, Tracy, Appia started as a uranium company. So we do have uh, four um, uh, uranium projects in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in around the Athabasca Basin in Saska North Saskatchewan. And obviously we also have the Alsis Lake, which is the high-grade uh, monazite uh, uh, rare earth project in, in the same area. And in addition to that, we have uh, a, a large uh, deposit in Elio Lake, Ontario, where we have 
in both infer and indicator categories of about 55 million pounds of uranium and about 180 million pounds of rare earths. And now with the uranium prices going uh, higher and uh, they're up over $100, that project looks very exciting. So um, in terms of the what we're doing, we have one of those projects is the Loringer. It's, uh, it's uh, close to the uh, infrastructure mining. Uh, there's across from the... Uh, the producing mines, uh, uh, there's power, and and, um, and we had drill. Uh, we had a couple of drilling campaigns in the last few years there, and now we did a deal with the uh, First Nations over there. So, and we're looking to uh, to drill this project, um, you know, weather permitting in the next month or two because it's a it's a project that we like to drill in the in the winter months. So. Uh, we're still waiting for a drilling permit, and if we get this drilling permit, uh, you know, we're hoping to uh, put a few holes uh, uh, in this very exciting uranium project uh, in the next uh, few weeks. So I'm certain many people out there are going, Apia, we have to talk to Tom or Stephen Borrega, or Constantine, Jack or Don. Will you all be at PDAC, and how can we find you? We have a booth there, and I, I for, I'm sorry I forgot the number on it, but uh, we do have a booth, and we've been on the PDAC for the last 15, 20 years anyway. And uh, uh, so uh, people should look for the Appia booth, and we'll be there to, uh, to meet and talk to everybody who's interested. Well, thank you so much for the update, Tom. We look forward to seeing you. Uh, both at PDAC, and I'm also looking forward to having a chat with Constantine about, and Jack Lipton, about how amazing these projects are for Appia, Rare Earths, and Uranium. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy.